Hi everyone and welcome to step one of the WISE Mentoring Framework. My name's Brenton Ward and I've got with me our two WISE guys. We've got Ed Chan and Jamie Johns. How are you, gents? Yeah. G'day, um, Brenton. G'day, Jamie. Hi, Ed. Hi, Brenton. Welcome back. So everyone, welcome to the very first step of our WISE Mentoring journey. And how better to begin than starting with a discovery session? Now, Ed, when we were coming up with this framework for our wise mentoring journey, you said we need to start with basically understanding and discovering where the firm is uh, and where they're at in their, their current business. Jamie, you've been through this process. So in this video, which will be about half an hour or so, um, I'd love for Ed, if you could set the scene as to why you do discovery sessions with firms that you mentor. And Jamie, if you can sort of intertwine your experience of what you did throughout your discovery session with Ed and, and how you got to well, the, the outcomes of that discovery session. So Ed, we'll start with you. Can you explain to us, one, why the need for a discovery session and what it actually is? Yes, uh, thanks, Brenton. Um, I, I guess I've, I've just um, gone through the journey myself in terms of the, the pain and, and, and you know, where, where I wanted to get to. And I know that most of the firms out there will have the same challenge. They'll want to know whether, you know, what they're, where they're going is, is in the right direction. They generally work very long hours. Uh, they don't have much of a lifestyle. Um, they don't see their families. Uh, they, they, the, the hours they work, when you divide it by the, the income they earn, it's very little in terms of the return on investment. And uh, everybody's pretty much in the same boat. So when I sit down with an accounting firm, I ask them what their challenges are. And it's pretty much all of that. It's, I don't see my kids, you know, I work very long hours. I'm consumed by the clients. Um, I'm a prisoner in my business. This business that was supposed to give me life is taking the life from me. And um, so I say to them that um, we've got to start with the end in mind. So let's, let's design your life and not let it take you, you know, take you wherever it will take you. Let's design your life. So I, I, um, I start off by saying that uh, most accounting firms um, develop their business in this way. They um, feel that they've got a, 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 a something to offer they hang up their shingle and they say that I'm in business. So through word of mouth, you know, they build their business up. And for many, many years, they work really long hours and they, some of them make good money and some of them don't make such good money. Um, but eventually at the end, when they retire, um, they sell the business because they've been, they've built the business up. So they know that if they stepped away from that business, the business will just, um, you know, won't won't go won't go as well if they stepped out of it. So their um, their attitude is that I'll flog it for as much as I can get, and then I'll retire. But then, what are you going to do with your money? So you can only invest it into several places. You can invest it into the stock market, and if you invest it into the stock market, you'll get a like a five percent dividend yield. <clears throat> so if you sold your practice for a million dollars you invested a million dollars into the stock market, you'll get $50,000 a year um, to live on. If you bought a property with it, the, the return on the property is about 3% net. So you'll get about $30,000 a year to live on. Now, currently, if you um, look at your practice, and I do everything as a return on investment. Um, currently, if you're doing a million dollars, after your wages, you should be earning around $250,000. That's a 25% return on your investment. So your million dollars today is earning you around 25% return. Some are less, some are more. Firm, some firms earn around 36, 38%. Other firms earn around 15%. But whether it's 15% or 38%, there's a lot more than a 5% dividend in the stock market or a 3% return uh, in the property. 
the, however, the problem with that with that is that um, you've built this business around yourself, and if you stepped out of this business, it's not going to go very well. So you have to sell it. The alternative is that during the lifetime of this business, you're earning reasonable money, and you take this profit and you pay tax on it because you end up paying quite a lot of tax on it and whatever you're left with you then invest it into some shares or in, into some property for your retirement and again it's a very slow way of doing it because you lose half of it in tax and what you're left with then you go and invest it however when i um, listen to warren buffett who runs berkshire hathaway the majority of the portfolio of Berkshire Hathaway is invested in direct businesses and a smaller portion is in direct shares. Now, the reason why he's invested directly into businesses is because the businesses give a return of around 25, 30%, whereas the investments from his share portfolio gives him a dividend of around five or 6%. So Berkshire Hathaway's been showing an average return of around 29% since the day he started for decades, decades and decades. And he said that um, when he looks for a business, he, he has uh, uh, four things that he looks for. It, the business has to sell a product that the mum and dad out there need. So he's picked businesses that, you know, mum and dads out there need tax returns. Everyone needs to do a tax return. He said that he had to understand the product. So for many years, he didn't go into IT because he didn't understand IT. He understood insurance and he understood all the other products, uh, the businesses that he went into. So we understand our business. The other thing was that he said it had to have really good management. And um, I believe we have really good management. And then the last thing he said that he needed control over it. So that's why he buys the business out a hundred percent. And, and then the, the period of ownership, Warren Buffett says is the period of ownership is forever. So the guy is pretty clever. And when I looked at our business and it ticked all of those boxes, I said to myself, well, why do I want to sell it, put it into the stock market, and drop my return on investment from 25%, which it is today, down to 5%, and lose control of it. And when the GFC comes around, you run the risk of losing half of it. When during the GFC, Chan and Nandle didn't lose anything, we kept growing. And during the GFC, a lot of the companies stopped paying dividends, whereas Chan and Nandle continue to pay the dividends. So when I looked, sat back and looked at that model, he, why would I want to sell it? But I understood that if I built the business around myself and I call that catching butterflies with a butterfly net. So you get out there and you catch these butterflies with a butterfly net. The mm. problem with that model is that, and that's the partnership model. And a lot of accounting firms have a partnership model where they'll only invite you to join them. If you're a finder, if you're a grinder or a minder, you wouldn't get invited to join them as a partner. So their growth model is based on, partners being finders but the problem with that model is that if you take that finder out of there that's the end of your business and that's not a very sustainable um, model in fact a lot of these very large accounting firms you actually don't buy in and when you leave you don't get anything out of it either mm. so i thought that was rather silly so it's much better to build a garden that attracts butterflies to you right, right. Yeah. that requires you not to build the business around yourself, but to build the business to work without you, right? And that requires investments. So let's talk about investments. When you invest back into your own business, it's tax deductible. When you take money out as profits, you lose half of it in tax before you're left with the other 50% to invest in assets. So by investing the money back into my own business, not only is it tax deductible, but it's, it's allowing me to um, fast track my retirement, um, uh, retirement money, if you like, um, in a much quicker way because everything I put back into a business is tax deductible. 
So building this garden that attracts butterflies to us, so that it's not dependent on me, right, allows me to go from a self-employed person to a business, then to a investment. Right, and it's the fastest way to get there because you don't pay any tax on it. You act, it's actually you actually get it as a tax deduction every time you invest invest back into your business, like systems and hiring people and so forth. And that made more sense to me. And listening to what Warren Buffett said, right, all came together. So what I say in the discovery is, firstly, I, I asked the, the the asked what the challenges are, but the challenges are all pretty much the same. Then I start with the end in mind. Then I say, well, what would you like your life to look like when you're 65 or 70? And how much income would you like to earn at that, at, at that point? And everybody's different. I, I understand that. Um, for me, it was about giving me more choice in my life so that I, I could choose whether I wanted to work or not. But then to, to achieve that, I had to have a pa you have to create passive income. And you can either choose it from outside investments or you chose it by turning your own business uh, into an investment. And I chose to do that. So I sit down with people and I say, okay, if you're going to, if you say to me when you're retired, you want to earn a hundred grand a year passively, if you're going to do that in property, or oh, sorry, if you're going to do that in the stock market, you need around $2 million right? at a 5% return gives you a hundred thousand a year. So you need to build your business up from zero to $2 million. Then you sell it and hopefully you'll get a lot of that, uh, putting aside capital gains tax and so forth. And then you go and you invest that in the stock market. So um, with most accountancy firms, if you, if you value them at a dollar per dollar, mm. then you can very easily identify what the capital value is. So, Assuming you're doing a million dollars turnover, and that means at a dollar per dollar, it's worth a million dollars. Then after your wages, most, a lot of accounting firms do a net return of around $250,000. So $250,000 on your million dollars capital is 25% return. Now, if you then were to sell that and took your million dollars and you put it into the stock market, you'd only get a 5% return, which is around $50,000. So obviously earning $250,000 off the same million dollars is a lot better, but you've got to set your business up in such a way that it can run without you and not because of you. Right. And in the discovery session, we work out what it is. We start with the end in mind, we work out what income that you want. So for example, you may say to me, I need an income of $200,000 a year. Now, at a 25% return, your turnover then would need to be $800,000 because generally um, your cost of goods sold is will sit at around 40% and that leaves you with a, a, a overheads of around 35% and then that leaves you with a 25% uh, net and or 200 grand. Now, now your, your wages is on top of that, but if we're just talking about passive income. If you then sold that eight hundred thousand dollars and put it in the stock market, you'll only earn forty grand from it. So how do we turn that business into an investment? So okay. we then work backwards and we work out turnover of eight hundred thousand. How many staff do you need? What are the systems that you need to put that into place? And what kind of staff do you need? Because uh, you need a combination of grinders and minders working in teams. And then we put in the place a, uh, a marketing, a growth strategies to help you get there. So is, is it fair to say as part of this discovery session, it's really getting business owners to, to get into that frame of mind of considering their business an investment rather than being in the thick of things and you know, taking whatever comes out at the end of the day. It's, it's really spinning that on its head and it's going, well, let's turn in this into an investment and see what we want to get as a return from it. Absolutely. So instead of going to work to prepare a tax return or to go to work to do a job, you're going to work to build something, right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to work in that, in that example to build an $800 million, uh, sorry, $800,000 turnover nice. business, yes, <laughs> uh, which will then pay you a 25% return. Mm. And that was, that's your superannuation fund. And in, in that process, you need the right people in the right seat and the right bus with, an, okay. with the right kind of systems and so forth.
Bye.